What's up, YouTube? Cold Ass Ice Princess coming at you from Minnesota, where it's real cold right about now. Anyway, guys, I wanted to share with y'all some um some interesting stuff that I was reading about California. You may have heard of this before, how they're using inmates to fight the fires out in California. So I came across this um post on democracynow.org. If you want to look it up and read about it, and there's also a video. So the post starts out like this. It says, a new form of slavery, question mark. Meet incarcerated firefighters battling California wildfires for $1 an hour. Okay. $1 an hour, mind you, to risk their life to save other people's lives and homes. Um, <laughs> in that place, was it paradise, I believe, where it, it consisted of, of very racist people and extremely rich people. And these firefighters, these prisoners are risking their lives to save these people's homes. And these people probably wouldn't give them the time or day out on the street. I'm just saying, that's my opinion. So I'm going to read a little bit of the article. It goes like this. Some reporters went out there to ask them questions. So it starts off, we go behind the scenes of California's raging climate-fueled wildfires with the hidden men and women on the front line of the state's ever-growing fire season. Prison firefighters. Of the 13,000 firefighters battling the blaze across the state, more than 2,500 are prisoners. While the average firefighter earns 74,000 plus benefits, the prisoners earn $1 per hour. And sometimes they work 24 hour shifts for $1 an hour. And these men and women are saving the state of California over $100 million every single year. Now, as reported, um, Sergeant Stephen Reeder said that the inmate firefighters are the backbone of California Fire Department. They do all. They get the toughest assignments there are out there to do. And they do whatever we tell them to do. So the interviewer went on to ask, like, what is the toughest assignment? And then the sergeant, Stephen Ryder, goes, whatever they're asked to do. Usually it's cutting the line where a dozer can't go. And cutting the line is where they um, sort of dig a trench. Um, like a little, uh, tr like use something like a hole to dig a trench where the fire can't cross. And they're sometimes within 8 to 10 feet of the fire. So it says, he says, so they get the toughest, toughest assignments in the worst conditions. 110 degrees in the middle of the sun, carrying and wearing two layers of clothing, carrying about 40 pounds of gear, and they have to carry all their food and water for the 24-hour shift. One of the inmates by the name of Dante Youngblood, um, he had been serving nine years and he chose to do this assignment because basically they get time off of their sentencing by doing this work. So like every two days they do the work, they get a dollar off of their sentencing. And then so Dante Youngblood spoke about um, them having to actually see one of the paid firefighters get killed right before their eyes. A tree fell on them. And then they were talking about how some of their own men, their prisoners... Their co-workers were injured um, because they fell down slippery rocks or uh, like just injuries due to the fire and the smoke, you know, breathing the smoke. And it's not like these men get a vacation or these women, they just have to keep going. You know, this is just what they do. And a lot of people online were saying, you know, what about their rights? What about their freedom? What about, you know... But it's like when you become a uh, prisoner, you basically give up your rights. You basically are a slave. So it's like 
even if they pay them 50 cent an hour, nobody could do anything about it because when you become a prisoner, you give up your rights. And I'm going to read y'all something from the uh, 13th Amendment, which is a slavery loophole. It says, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place, subject, or jurisdiction. So I'm reading from History.com. Does an exemption clause in the 13th Amendment still permit slavery? The amendment which officially abolished slavery in the United States in 1865 included a loophole regarding involuntary servitude. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because each one teach one. Listen, guys, listen. The 13th Amendment ratified in 1865 says neither slave nor involuntary servitude except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Scholars, activists, and prisoners have linked that exempt exception clause to the rise of a prison system that incarcerates black people at more than five times the rate of white people and profit off of their unpaid or underpaid labor. Listen, talk to your nieces and nephews. Talk to your cousins. Let them know that this going to jail mess is not cool. It is not a rite of passage. You are giving up your freedom. Them locking you up behind those bars means they can do anything to you. If they want to feed you dog slop, they can do it. Because you have just turned yourself back into a slave again. That's just something to think about. As always, grace and peace. Cold as ice princess coming at you from Minnesota.